Yeah, so uh, let's get started. Uh, welcome everyone and thank you uh, and welcome to this webinar in the Excel Living training program. And today it's about how you get your company ready for private funding. Um, so I will just begin with a short introduction and then I will give the word to Hugo Ramos, who is going to tell you about how to get your company ready for private funding. And then we will move on in the end to a short a session with my pro who my project colleague Agusti is going to lead this, the session. I will just quickly tell you by why we are here. Um, so the Excel Living project is a project focusing on habitats uh, in the cross sectorial dimension. Um, and it's through home automation, welfare technology, lightning, furniture and building and construction materials. And in this two year project, we are now doing the activity where we want to offer an innovative program of webinars addressed to SMEs and other cluster members as well. And we are doing this to we want to increase your competitiveness and your internationalization opportunities and essentially to enhance a smarter, more age friendly and greener habitat value chain. So we have different topics in the in the webinar series. It's both within digitalization advanced technologies, management, sustainability, and internationalization. And I just want to tell you about the Excel Living Help Desk, uh, where you can go and ask uh, our advisors a question, and you can find other people interested in the same topic as you are. And then it's also in the Excel Living Help Desk where you will access the, the recording of the webinar afterwards, and also find the, the presentation from the speaker. Uh, I will send you a link to the help desk afterwards. Yeah, before giving the word to uh, Hugo, I just want to tell you that uh, the, the session is going to be recorded um, and we will end the recording after after the presentation. Um, and please keep your, your sound off uh, during the presentation as well. And now I want to welcome Hugo Ramos, who is a co-founder and partner of Matching Venture and Venture Catalyst, and also a lecturer and entrepreneur and a lot of different things. So maybe you can tell a bit more about it yourself, Hugo. But welcome to you and you're welcome to, to share your screen now. So thank you, Nana. Um, and, uh, and oh, sorry, my camera is keep on sliding. Um, Good morning, good afternoon for everybody, and um, thank you for welcoming me on this uh, webinar. I will try to do uh, the task of uh, getting, uh, helping you get your companies ready for private funding. Um, I, I have a presentation. I I can talk about myself in the in the first slides of my presentation. Uh, I don't know if you can see my screen already. Yes. Yes. OK, so um, again, uh, the, the topic of the webinar is how to get your company ready for private funding. And um, and why why am I uh, giving you this webinar? Um, actually, uh, I I am a Portuguese uh, chemical engineer and I by training and I, I did my MBA uh, 12, 13 years ago already, and uh, from then on I became mostly an entrepreneur and a venture catalyst. What does that mean? I, I started uh, already four companies that you can see there on the right. One of them was sold already to a, to, um, a bigger company in the UK, and uh, I've been working on entrepreneurship and uh, private funding uh, for the last uh, 12 years. And uh, I've been working as a venture capital also. And um, in the meantime, I helped to create these companies and other companies from other founders as well, as um, uh, we had a process at Venture Catalyst to help creating new business based on scientific uh, knowledge. And um, from two years ago, uh, three years ago, I decided to create also a company with a, a partner of mine in the, that we call Matching Ventures, where we help 
companies, startups to to get funding from from investors, and probably that's the the reason why um, uh, someone uh, thought about me to to give you this this webinar. So enough about me. I will I will start right away. Uh, talking about private funding. So what is private funding um, in the sense that I will um, try to, to address this, this webinar? So there's several ways, several types of private funding that you can find out there. Uh, there's uh, um, friends and family funding that you can access to. There's uh, um, banks. It's also most banks are private. Uh, banks um, that you can also um, go to to get funding. But uh, where I want to focus my attention in this webinar is uh, on a, a class of private funding that, that is uh, usually um, uh, um, provided by uh, what we call business angels and venture capitalists. And um, I will come to that in a moment. Another Another uh, source of pride of funding that, that, that is coming, um, becoming more and more um, popular these days is crowdsourcing. So types of uh, funding that you can uh, go to the crowd and get your, your businesses uh, funded by the crowd, be it uh, equity crowdfunding or uh, lending uh, crowdfunding as well. Um, I will not go in detail into this, but uh, I will focus more this presentation out to get funding from business angels and venture capitalists. And um, to understand a bit more what what we we call what are business angels and venture capitalists, I will I, I try to address this in in a in this slide. So basically, business angels are individuals. Um, and venture capitalists, uh, they are also people, individuals, but they, they work in organizations, the, the venture capital firms, and, and so they are teams of uh, professionals in this, in this area. Uh, and the, the individuals, the business angels, they are most likely to uh, entrepreneurs themselves or business people that uh, somehow um, were successful in their, in their businesses, so they, they have money. And they and they have this um, this will to help other people to str to thrive in business. So usually differences the differences that you can spot from business angels and venture capitalists are most likely uh, most probably in these five uh, um, um, areas that I mentioned here. One is the source of funds. So business angels work with their own funds, their their own money. Whereas uh, venture capitals uh, use uh, what they call LP funds, limited partners. So they have uh, they have structured funds that they they go to uh, to fund those funds by institutional investors, pension funds, um, corporates, and uh, um, public uh, institutions, and and different sources of uh, institutions that that uh, allocate parts of their capital um, um, uh, to different assets. And um, and and the, this is what constitutes the the funds for for the venture capital. So they use money from other people in a structured way. They don't use their own money. Um, another difference is that uh, business angels usually invest earlier than venture capitalists. And um, this means that they enter in the companies in um, in not perhaps not right in the beginning, but in the very early stages of the company where um, the company most likely still doesn't have revenue or has very little revenue. And the uh, venture capitalists tend to invest later. Um, there are also some venture capital firms that invest uh, pre-revenue, but uh, they tend to invest later in what we call the series A's and series B's of, of funding. And uh, this is also connected with the investment size. So um, in the beginning, uh, business angels enter with smaller tickets in the investment size. In the, and this varies a lot country by country. 
I, I, I have there uh, less than 1 million for business angels. I would say that in many countries, you can have business angels invest as little as uh, 50,000. So, um, or uh, 100,000 in, um, in the most, most developed countries and the most development, uh, developed industries of uh, venture capital and private equity, you can have business angels go to up to 1 million in, of investment and even more uh, in, in very seldom cases. Um, as opposed to that, venture capitalists usually have larger tickets also uh, this is also connected with the stage and there are venture capital firms that pour in in the series a's or series b's uh, um, 5 million 10 million in a company and even in some cases more and uh, another another difference is that business angels usually they want to help they are very, they are more pro proactive um, they usually also have less companies in their portfolio so they want to be involved um, because usually they invest in areas that they are they have expertise or they are very interested in these areas for some reason in their life and so they want to be involved they want to be in the um, in the boards of the companies they want to have uh, a word to say in the in the business um, Whereas uh, venture capitalists, uh, also because they have larger portfolios, uh, lots of companies in their portfolios, they tend to be less involved, and um, and they have, uh, they can also have members in the board, but usually non-executive members, and and they have less control of of the the operations. And another. Another characteristic is about how they enter in the companies, how they, they structure the deals to enter the companies. So business essentials typically have simple deals. Um, I have some acronyms there, uh, sorry for that. Uh, uh, um, CD means convertible debt, debt and SAFE is, um, is a simple agreement for future equity. Are uh, terms for uh, what are the typical types of deal that uh, uh, business angels uh, have into uh, when and they enter the companies, meaning that they they usually uh, lo lend money to the company and they they will value that at a future round if it's convertible debt or or even a safe. And uh, venture capitalists tend to be more um, uh, more. Um, um, structured here, they they demand uh, more thorough contracts. They usually uh, enter in the company in exchange directly for equity in the company. Um, this also varies from country and from uh, either you are in Europe or in the US. There's some types that are more common. Uh, according to the, the the country or even the industries that you're in. But basically, as you can see, business angels enter first uh, with smaller tickets and have simpler terms uh, as opposed to venture capitalists. And uh, why is this important? Because this is uh, also, um, uh, um, it, it relates to the when. When do you look for, for private investment? But just before that, I will, I will try to, to, to cover another topic here that this is um, when I, when I show the types of funding that uh, that exist for your companies, um, and and we decided that this webinar will would go for private funding in the in the sense of venture ca early stage venture capital, which is the business angels and the the venture capital firms. This represents a tiny bit of the all, all the funding that is available and is used uh, for SMEs, uh, for instance, in Europe. As you can see here, um, about 500 billion per year is used in funding, private funding for SMEs in Europe. And the bigger part, the bigger chunk, 80% of that comes from banks and financial institutions. And uh, private equity in general represents only about 20%. 100 billion and out of this um, most of money goes to buyouts so companies buying 
other companies or uh, funds buying companies uh, um, for their portfolios. Whereas only around 20%, again, uh, 20 billion goes to early uh, stage uh, venture capital. Uh, still a lot of money, but uh, we have to understand that uh, this is a small part of the whole 500 billion. And why is that? And that's related also um, with another question that we wanted to, to try to answer in this webinar, is that not every company is suitable for this kind of, of, of funding. Okay, and uh, I will try to go into that late, uh, a little bit uh, now. Uh, so who are the companies? Who, who is suitable for private funding? Uh, it have you have to be uh, in um, acting in a market with a very large opportunity uh, in the in the in this market. Uh, it's not, for instance, just to uh, just to make an example. If you are um, if you are if you have a, um, a restaurant uh, or you have uh, a local business. Uh, or uh, you have a um, car sales uh, stand or or um, if you have a service uh, um, uh, consulting service company these companies uh, have probably uh, market but they are not they are not in a very large market opportunity they um, either because of geographic limitations either because uh, um, you depend um, you depend on on the um, on the conditions of your local market uh, and uh, and you provide a service that is very dependent on people so uh, if you're not in a very large market opportunity you will not uh, be suitable for private funding because uh, private investors in this in this um, in this uh, type of uh, funding, they want large returns, because they invest in the beginning of the companies where the risk is still very high. As I said, for example, business angels invest uh, many times uh, before revenue, before companies start selling. So um, this is very risky. In the in the sense that uh, uh, the business is still not there, is not is not uh, uh, mature enough, uh, so the risk is is very high. So they they look for large market opportunities, markets that can generate substantial amount of uh, of revenue and then can grow um, rapidly. And this is connected with scalable business model so if you have again if you have a consulting firm that that is depending on the number of consultants that you have um, to to grow their business it's not very easy to scale um, whereas if you have a um, um, software as a service platform uh, that you can after having developed it, you can easily scale that to other countries, other um, other areas of business. It's much easier to scale business model. So that's the kind of models that uh, that um, private investors want. Easier to scale, whether it's digital or not, can be non-digital as well. Um, and um, this is this is important. Uh, Scalability is important because, again, gives you larger opportunities. Another thing that is it is important for your business to to have uh, to become uh, suitable for private funding is uh, a disruptive or innovative product and services. If you do um, a business like another another business without differentiation, it's very difficult that uh, investors will want to to invest uh, in your company. Uh, you have to have something new, whether it's in the product or in the service or in the type of business model that you provide to the to the customers. And um, it is important as well that uh, that you you can show your investors uh, that you have traction. And with traction again. Uh, it doesn't mean uh, that you have to have sales, but you have to have uh, some 
uh, knowledge of the market and some contact with the, the your future customers uh, where they are uh, they perceive the value of the, the product or service that you provide and they are willing uh, to 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 buy this product or service when whenever it comes to the market whenever you're ready to to sell them and this is um, uh, this is important uh, and sometimes in many cases where you you work on business to business you have to to do a lot of uh, um, pilots with uh, with customers you have to show your customers um, the potential of your of your product. Why is it better than what they were using before? Before you start selling, and this is also uh, the pilots and this these tests are also signs of traction and and growth potential that you you can show investors. Another thing that you 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 have to show investors is that how you how will you uh, maintain your competitive advantage. How, how can you defend from competition? Um, and you can. There's different ways of doing that. There's uh, also um, di uh, different uh, levels of importance on, on, on these ways of doing that. Uh, is is it by intellectual pro property? Do you have uh, um, um, a patent or some brand that uh, that is registered in your in your company uh, you have um, software that is uh, um, that is a trade secret or you have a, a process that you where uh, through which you 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 manufacture your product or and and this is also a trade secret all this can be competitive advantage um, that that are more or less defensible even if you are when you are a startup and and uh, you have a patent, uh, you don't want a patent because you're going to litigate with whom comes and and says that your patent is infringing other patents. Uh, that's not the purpose. The purpose of a patent is to uh, to make it uh, more difficult for others to enter your um, your business uh, and eventually to negotiate with bigger companies that that uh, want to enter this business and you want to and you might license it or you you have some tool to negotiate um, down the road when the when things get hot in if you are have uh, success or if you're on the path to success uh, the patent will be an instrument for negotiation and and, and that's that's important as well Another thing that that is important is to have a strong management team. Of course, if you're starting a business, you, you probably don't have many people, uh, but you have to have one or two, three key people on the on the um, uh, the area that you are trying to get into. Uh, being uh, engineering people that know about uh, the product or the service, people that knows knows about how to sell this in the in the market, um, people with exper previous experience in 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 doing this uh, elsewhere uh, in different contexts, or um, and of course this is the ideal scenario. Um, in many cases, and whenever you are a uh, young team with uh, less experience, uh, what what you have to do, and, and you've seen that, we've seen that all uh, happening in 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 especially in startups. Uh, what the usual thing to do, and the better thing to do, in my opinion, is to get yourself uh, surrounded by good advisors, people that are knowledgeable in the area, people that have done it people that will not be in your payroll directly but uh, they will advise you because uh, either they are willing to to help because they like your project and and or because you also gave them uh, what we call stock options uh, so you 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 pay them I, we usually say that you pay them with your future code uh, the you still don't have uh, money to pay them because you are actually you are looking for private money at this stage. But um, 
you can always pay them with the with the um, the potential from the fut future and that's also uh, a way to get your team more experienced and more knowledgeable and with access to other networks and without having them inside because uh, you just don't have the, the you are uh, young people that want to start a business and that's perfectly okay so you just have to use different tools to get there to have a strong team and then and final uh, and also very important one very uh, 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 crucial point when you look for private funding is to understand that uh, if things go well um, you probably will um, uh, make some uh, people annoyed or you will probably get the attention of people that uh, might want to buy you in the future and and this is very important for investors because uh, as opposed to you that are building probably your 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 one business for your life or for a, a considerable part of your life for an investor um, as the, the 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 word says they will invest money because they want something in return and typically the return is when you sell when they sell their their stake in your company so do you have to you have to show them that in three, four, five, ten years time, you will have a business that uh, probably will catch some other people's attention, and you can be bought by a big player in the market, or you can be um, uh, become and merge with another company in the market, and you 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 grow from there. So, and this will be the opportunity for the investor to go out. To, to exit your company and make some profit out of the investment they made. So you don't have, um, so I, I've shown you here seven uh, um, points that are important for private funding. You don't have to have them all from the beginning. Uh, you will, ha you should try to 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 think of them uh, of them all, but you will have to have uh, four or five of these uh, at least. Um, to 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 make uh, investors willing to 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 take on the risk to invest in your company and so um and as i as i shown before this is uh, the the companies the businesses that show these traits are a very uh, small percentage of businesses that are out there in in the market and that's why the money flowing to this business is also a small percentage of the whole money, private money. But in the but in the end, these are the companies that, in my opinion, most likely will transform businesses in the next uh, in the next decades. And we are seeing it already. The, the most valuable companies in the world right now are private backed. Uh, by private investors, uh, 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 private-backed companies uh, like the the Googles and the, the Apples and the Teslas and all all that and Amazon, and uh, I think this this will keep on being the tendency in in the upcoming years, in my opinion. And uh, this this doesn't mean that the other businesses are not good. Many businesses are very good, but they are not. They don't have the characteristics to get private funding. And uh, another important uh, uh, notion that we have to uh, that I will try to to pass you is that this this kind of businesses they um, they have uh, life, uh, all businesses have life cycles, but these businesses that have, that recur to private funding have a very typical life cycle and. Uh, uh, if you see this graph um, in terms of financing a business like this, um, in the uh, on the um, here on the on on the y um, axis you see revenue on the x axis you see time, and um, you see that these companies typically don't have revenue in the beginning. They are losing money and they and they start. Uh, at a certain point to to sell and earn money and as the time goes by they 
earn more money and they and they they need different types of funding different stages they are they have the different stages of funding uh, along this along this path and in the beginning uh, what we call the seed capital or pre even pre seed uh, there's many uh, uh, names to that and usually you only have um, the what we call the three f's uh, F uh, stands for friends, fools, and family, and so people that uh, are willing to to help you because they they know you, they uh, and and they and they want to help you because they like your your ideas, and the business angels because as I said before, business angels typically invest early, and um, this is this is important because. Uh, um, Typically, when you start selling, you start attracting the different stages of venture capital, and the, what we call the Series A's and the Series B's, and, and from then on, de depending on on the business, they will have different stages of of um, of venture capital. Uh, up to Series B, we usually call it early stage, and from then on, uh, later stage venture capital, and um, and this is where in many occasions, companies also get their exits to another company where they are sold and or acquired by other companies or they merge with other companies. And in very few cases, companies uh, go uh, all the way and they become public. They go to IPO and they become public and then they are listed in the stock markets. Again, this, uh, this is the exception. Um, most of the companies either die in this process, uh, and this is the majority of them happen to die because this is very risky, and um, a large part of them will somehow in this middle be acquired um, by other or merged, and a, a small part of them will uh, go all the way and get their uh, get into the stock market, and um, so. At different stages of your company, of the life of your company, you will have different kinds of private investors to record. Uh, so business angels and venture capital for the early stage are in this part of the graph and, um, and they, they account for much less funding than from this later stage of the of the graph. This is when I showed you the 100 billion that 80% would go to the buyouts. It's around here, and 20% goes to this. Oh, sorry, uh, to this part of the of the of the graph. And um, now going going to the core of the presentation here, how to prepare yourself to get funding. And then um, again, I have here seven points that are uh, um, important. Some of them relate to what we've talked before. Uh, uh, that is that makes you suitable. Um, but I will highlight two of them. The two that here in yellow. You have to develop a business plan uh, that incorporates a financial plan and you have to develop a pitch deck. And this is important because this is how you will approach your investors. Um, apart from that, you, you still have to have a strong team, as mentioned before. Very important for, uh, to address uh, investors is the validation of your market, what we called uh, um, before. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's important to, for you to, to talk with your potential customers and have their feedback, get validation for your product. Um, it's important that you demonstrate tech traction, as I said before, as well. So the, the pilots, the tests with customers or um, uh, early sales that you can can have. It's very uh, it's also important that you you network. So you again, the seek for advisors, uh, talk to other entrepreneurs that have uh, have made this before and seek for guidance from them and uh, also it is important for you to understand that in the end when 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 investors uh, might be 
uh, willing to invest in your company, they will get they will uh, try to get the best conditions on their investment, and that is uh, usually uh, getting if they get the best conditions, you get the worst conditions. So that that there has to be a negotiation to get middle terms here, and so you have to be prepared to negotiate uh, in this process. But um, these are the main characteristics, but the two main um, documents or uh, um, uh, supports that you have to to approach investors is is to have a business plan on on your business and have a presentation, which is how to convey this business plan in a pitch deck in a presentation that that you can make to the investors. And going deeper into these two, I will not go very much in detail, but um, typically you can squeeze this a little bit or add one or two other topics. But the main topics that you have to 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 have in a in a business plan is is these ten topics that I have here. Uh, company overview: you have to describe the company, the history, the um, uh, the founding team, and your main achievements. You have to make a market analysis. You have to uh, understand what is the size of the market that you are into. Um, how is it growing? Are there trends in this market? Uh, what is the competitive landscape in the market? Um, is there a typical customer? So all this uh, is important for you to, to show that there is market for your product and service, which you will also describe. Uh, you have to explain the features of your products, the benefits to you, to the customers, how does it compare to other products is uh, is, in, is also uh, important uh, to to understand. And then um, uh, one very important feature of the business plan is your business model. The business model is uh, the way that you make money. Your revenue model. How do you how do you uh, will uh, price your product? How do you uh, distribute your product? Um, how do you acquire customers? Um, what is your profitability in in this model? So all this is important to to describe your business model. And then uh, marketing and sales. So how do you advertise and how do you sell the product? Is it online? Is it in stores? Um, do you, what is your branding? This is, is this important? How, how are your tactics to acquire customers? All that. Um, how a competitive analysis is uh, how do you perform against competitors? Is, are there competitors in the market? And, and uh, there are always competitors in the market. Um, companies that that say that then don't have competition, it's not true. Uh, they all all have competition. Perhaps they don't have direct competition. Perhaps what they sh they bring into the market is uh, trying to create a different category. But the world is solving that problem in another way. So uh, today, so you have to to understand that you always have direct indirect competition, whether it's because you are uh, looking for time from people and people are already using their time with something else, or uh, if you are coming with a scooter and people use bikes or uh, or they use their cars, and so it's um, indirect competition. So you ha it's important for you to 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 position yourself against the competitors and see uh, how do you how do you score against them. Then in the in the business plan also operations and team is important to to have there. So how do you do you structure your team and what will they do in the in the struct in the in the structure of the the company and do you have internal production or do you outsource or um, what what are your partnerships and this is also um, important to present in the business plan and then the um, the last three they are all part of what we call the financial plan so you have to make financial projections on 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 
uh, your business. So um, based on unit sales, based on price, based on your costs, you have to detail your costs. And if I could only give you one advice for financial projections is that there, there is not right or wrong here. But the most important part of the financial projections are the, um, the assumptions and all the, um, the assumptions that you do to get there. So try to explain these assumptions. Otherwise, uh, people don't know why do you, why are you selling 1 million or 10 million? Um, it, it, is, it is very important to, to, to make clear your assumptions. And from the financial projections, you will also, one outcome will be the funding that you will need. So if you, from your projections, you will only start selling on, and at uh, year two, and you have to, to invest a lot in the first two years, uh, this investment will give you the, um, the, the funding needs for that. And then present an exit strategy, as mentioned before. So what could be an exit strategy for, for your investors? Think about that and put it in the business plan. I think I have to go a little bit faster. I'll try to. Yeah, you have a do... couple of more minutes, and then we have time for some questions. Okay, so I'll, I will. The other, the other, um, the other document that is important is the pitch deck, which is a presentation that sums up, in a way, what you presented in your business plan. These are some. There's many um, ideas of how to structure a pitch deck. This is the one that I that I usually use as, as basis. And, um, and, and a pitch deck has to be uh, something that you can present to investors in 20 minutes. So not many slides. Um, and, uh, and if they are interested, a pitch deck is like, uh, uh, it's like a teaser. It's something for that to be, become interested and want to ask you more about that. Um, and this is the main contents of the, um, of a good pitch deck and uh, I will leave you this slide uh, because this is um, I, I found it interesting this is how you tell the story and this is 10 tips of telling stories from Elon Musk uh, we don't have time so I'll move on but I will leave you that as a uh, as a, uh, I think it's a good way to to tell a story good good hints here for telling stories and then um, another another thing that I will move faster here in the presentation because we're running out of time is the also uh, I think it's interesting for you to to uh, read for these 10 lies that you typically uh, entrepreneurs tell to investors and investors already know so um, this is something and I will give an example Typically, we say we only get 1% of the market. This is a very con conservative projection. It can be conservative or not, depending on, on the advantage that you bring to the market. So um, just don't, don't tell these, these things without uh, supporting them on data. And um, I, will, I will move. Another one is, uh, that I like very much is uh, Procter & Gamble is too old, too big and too dumb, and too slow to be a threat. Uh, just forgetting one thing is Procter and Gamble has uh, 10 billion in cash to spend and kill opponents if if necessary, in the in business sense of course. And the, um, I will just go very fast through some other key elements that you can use uh, on the way when you have your own company. One is to keep your people focused and. And give them um, give them information about your business and how things are going, so that they can keep their drive. Um, because people are key for your business. If if they are not on board, you will not get there. Um, one other another hint is that uh, it's different to have a company than to have a business, and it's people tend to create companies and go to the the structure and the roles and your image and create events and this is later first you have to go to have product and customer economics and finance and how you're going to grow and this is the business part so first create your business and then uh, worry yourself about the company uh, get diversity in your team this is very important not only because it's a trend nowadays diversity of gender or wh whatever it's because 
different people have different opinions and you can have different uh, views and and greater capacity to, to to solve questions and being this uh, gender diverse and diversity being um, uh, country race whatever and backgrounds this it's all impor always important important to have diversity and exit again i cannot stress this enough think about exit how you will give exit to your investors it's important because otherwise they won't invest if they don't see that they will have an opportunity to exit and some secrets to endure in your business because this is uh, very difficult to keep on uh, these businesses alive when you're looking many times for money is that uh, more important than technology is your product and more important than your product is your people so take care of your people then take care of your product and if you have time take care of your technology as well and about money um, you have to and that's why financial plans are important you have to seek for the right amount of money not too much and also not too little because if you ask for too little money you will have a problem you will have to start looking for money before you achieved a milestone that uh, that gives the investors the the sense that you are going in the right direction okay so uh, you have to think this over and and see what is the, the right amount of money to ask for and uh, very important idea ideas are usually what we think of as as uh, brilliant but without execution they're nothing they worth zero without executing them another thing that is important you have to be prepared to adapt because uh, either because uh, what you thought was the uh, the the market uh, it's now different or because your investors think that your product is better to go to a different uh, sector um, this is very be prepared to adapt don't be too stubborn not to adapt if the market or investors or or um, they are telling you elsewhere to go elsewhere and uh, try to learn and especially try to learn with others uh, errors and not yours and be, be connected to the to the industry players because you can learn from them as well and last but not least uh, celebrate the little wins celebrate because uh, um, if you have your own business and if you're looking for funding all the way uh, all the time this is very tiring and if you don't celebrate uh, you will be even more tired and, and uh, demotivated and um, as i am an entrepreneur i leave you with one last quote a quote with this uh, if you don't build your own dream someone will hire you to help build theirs so um, go out there and, and find your find your dream, find your 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 business. And uh, I think I went a little bit through too, but I'm over. <laughs>